Welcome. Let's look at section 4.6. And this section is all about um, using, doing integration uh, with log functions. So we're looking at natural log mainly. Just a little bit of review. And that is to get you back familiarized with how to take the derivative of natural log. And we know that that pattern was u prime divided by u. You know, really it's a 1 over u times the chain rule u prime. But for the most part, we just kind of remember that it was u prime over u. So if I did problem A here, I would have y prime equals uh, u prime 2x over the u portion, which would be x squared plus 1. So now, today, what we want to do is work on backing this up. Could I integrate this and come out with a y value? So what would be the integral of that y prime? Well, it should. We should be able to get back to something like that, correct? I'm going to save on the other two, um, b, c, and d. We might have time in class to go through those. So let's just look at integration rules. So here it says the log rule for integration, let u be a differentiable function of x. So down here we can think of this as some f of x function. And we're given two integration rules. One, when it's strictly just 1 over x, we've been playing with this when we know that it'll integrate to natural log absolute value x plus c. And then what if it was 1 over u, where this was a little bit bigger function in terms of x? Well, the general, general idea is that it'll be natural log of absolute value u plus c. However, there may be uh, some minor adjustments that we need to make that we'll find out in our u substitution process. So the alternative form for the log rule is I'm looking for that u prime over u idea right? Just like when we took the derivative, we get u prime over u. So if we integrate, we should be seeing that pattern where the top u prime is some derivative of the bottom, which was u. So that's what we're trying to spy when we say, oh, this looks like it'd be a nice application for integration using uh, of, of the natural log. So find the following. Looks like we're on a definite integral here, so that'll require us to do an f of b minus f of a idea. The negative I can pull out front and not really be bothered by it. I can even pull that negative 7 out front and go 1 to square root 3 uh, for my bounds of integration, 1 over x dx. And I recognize that this is indeed a natural log application or integration. So if I integrate 1 over x, it gives me natural log of absolute value x plus c. No u sub needed. It's just such a nice clean 1x that, that no worries. Um, and then I've got, oops, no plus c was it? I just saw that. Um, this was on the bounds from 1 to root 3. So we should plug that in. I'm going to hold my negative 7 out front and just proceed through first by doing f of b. So start at the top, natural log of root 3 minus natural log of 1. Notice I didn't put any absolute value signs because I know that this is a positive amount and I know 1 was positive. So no absolute values necessary. Minus 7. Um, natural log of 1 is one of those values we should have memorized. It is 0 because e to the 0 equals 1. And so that goes to 0. I guess my answer is going to be negative 7 natural log absolute um, square root 3. And that's, that's it. Could I write this differently? Yes, we, we, did, we could indeed. Um, I could think of square root 3 as 3 to the 1 half power. And I could also see that this power out front comes back as the power of that uh, f function inside the natural log. So I could bring this back up and call it natural log of 3 to the 1 half raised to the negative 7th. And then, of course, that can be simplified to a natural log of 3 raised to the negative 7 halves. And I only mention this because you really need to be able to convert yourself between those two representations. They're identical um, 
or they're equal, but they they do look a little different. Let's do B. Where was B? Right there. So I'm looking at B, and I notice that we're gonna get B over there. That if I set this up to be my U then I need its derivative to be on the top. And u prime, well, that's close, isn't it? At least the x is going to go down to uh, an x to the 0 value. So let's set up u. Let u equal 4x plus 1. Often it is the denominator that, that becomes our u. And this will be 4 comma dx or times dx. But I don't have four of them. I'm just looking for a solo one. So I'm going to divide by four, giving me one-fourth du is equal to dx. Now be very deliberate in your substitution practice. A one dx, one dx is equivalent to one-fourth du. And then I have this is my u, which was under the bottom. So one over u. And I know the integral of 1 over u is natural log absolute value u. This is an indefinite integral, no bounds. So we will have the plus c this time. And then let's just change back into our x values, 4x plus 1. I will keep the absolute value signs on there because there is a chance that we can have a negative x coming in, which... We've got to keep a domain, a valid domain for natural log. All right, not bad. Let's go to, um, well, C looks funky, doesn't it? Looks really busy. But my busiest part of this that I see is really right here. And inside, I've got an inside function and then an outside function of cubing. So let's let u equal that inside portion natural log x. And if we take its derivative, I get 1 over x dx. Is that present? Yeah, it is. So when I look at this integral, I could have written it as 1 over x times 1 over natural log of x raised to the third dx. That is equivalent, isn't it? And so here is that, that 1 over x dx equivalent to du. So let's go with 1 over x dx is just simply du. And this would look like 1 over u cubed, wouldn't it? Because this is my u. So the u cubed. Um, in order to integrate this, I like to go with the negative exponent. So I rewrote. And then just let's add a power and divide by that same power or multiply by its reciprocal. And then plus c. To rewrite will give me negative 1 half. The u actually is going to go to the bottom, isn't it? And my u was natural log of x raised to the second power. It won't be negative because I did drop it to the bottom. And then it'd be a plus c. So I'd have negative 1 over 2 natural log of x squared. Now, I don't know about you, but I kind of wonder about this natural log. Does it mean natural log squared the way I wrote it? Or is this talking about just x getting squared? Well, for me, in this problem, it was the whole entire u that was getting squared. So indeed, I better get some parentheses around there and say, hey, natural log of x, quantity squared. So just be really particular about that. Uh, letter D won't be all that bad. Um, I see 1 fourth. Hopefully you spot, spotted that too. So I'm going to pull out 1 fourth. I see secant squared x dx. Um, underneath it is a tangent x. And what's striking me is that if I let u equal tan x, its derivative, of course, is secant squared x dx. So this is an easy peasy one, I, I think. Um, one fourth out front. The du will replace the secant squared dx. So I get a du over a u. 
And that really means I have 1 and 4, 1 over u du, which is 1 4 natural log absolute value of u, but u is tan x. And there we're done. Sometimes people like to rewrite this as u to the negative 1 du because for them it's more of a trigger to see the negative one exponent and that re reminds them that oh hey integrating something to a negative one power that's a natural log so you know you have to decide whether you prefer it in this format or would you prefer to write it in that form personal preference e do we need to do e yeah i think i will do e so e has bounds from one to e is there something present where if I set it up as u, that I would get its derivative. Yes, there is. So I could go one natural log of x. Its derivative is 1 over x dx. Do we have that present? Yes, indeed we do, because we have 1 over x, and then I could say I have whoops, 1 plus natural log x raised to the third dx. Ooh, get a little dx on there. Um, that'd be a typo for me. Let's see. Yeah, we've got that 1 over x, don't we? That that really helps us out on this particular one. So this is going to be an integral. This is my u. And this joined with this is our du. Very clean. Okay, so u to the third du. The trouble, I don't know if it's really trouble, but I need to be careful about my bounds. And I don't intend on, ten, on heading back to my x's, so I'm going to update my bounds with the u values. So when x equals 1, u becomes 1 plus natural log of 1. Natural log of 1 is 0, so oh, it just stays 1. And then when x is e, u becomes 1 plus natural log of e. Natural log of e is 1. That gives us 2, doesn't it? So I've now updated my bounds, and I will not be heading back into the x's. So we integrate this, and it's just going to become u to the 4th divided by 4. So 1 fourth u to the 4th evaluated from 1 to 2. I'm going to leave my 1 fourth out front, throw in the 2, 2 to the 4th, 16, minus 1 to the 4th is 1. Inside I have 15, multiplied by a 4th gives me 15 fourths. So not, you know, we're just really focusing in on that natural log. I think we have done some of them before. Now, example two, I only got about three minutes to do this. Um, example two says use long division or synthetic division. Well, when I look at the denominator on this one, uh, the, yeah, not, not going to be able to use synthetic on that. Over here, absolutely I can use synthetic. Why do I want to use uh, a division process on this? Well, read this red type. It says when a rational function has a numerator of degree greater than or equal to that of the denominator, a division step may help reveal a form to which we can apply the log rules. So let's do a little long division. I know you're excited to do that. The top portion is my div addend, and the outside or the denominator is the divisor. So we'll set it up like that. And then we begin the process. I'm going to focus on my largest degrees here. How many times does x squared go into x squared? Well, that would be a 1, wouldn't it? And I put mine above the degree I was working on. Your Algebra 2 teacher might have taught you differently. You can do it how you want it. I prefer this way. So I go 1 times. It's a, it's a distributive step. So 1 will multiply times each of these. That will give me x squared plus 1. Ooh. Now, as I was writing that down, I noticed that doesn't match up so well, does it? My terms aren't in alignment. So I am actually going to slide this puppy over and put the constant under the constant. So x squared minus x squared will zero out. 
this is going to come down and 1 minus 1 will give me a 0 there. Now, can x squared go into x? No, it cannot. I don't really need the plus 0 then. And I get an answer of x plus x over x squared plus 1. This is a remainder, correct? So what have we created here? Well, we've created a, an equivalent statement. I could rewrite this fraction into this because I did division. I took x squared into this and came up with this answer. So actually now I'm working with an integral of 1 plus x over x squared plus 1 through using long division and just kind of simplifying that original integral. Now can I handle this? Absolutely. So we can actually think of this as 1 dx and this integral is x over x squared plus 1. One of these is more complicated than the other, obviously. Um, this is easy, isn't it? Integrating 1, that would simply be an x plus c. I don't really need to write that c down. I'm actually going to pick up my c over here, but that's okay. We'll do it. How about my integration for this? Well, that I'm going to use a little bit of u sub in order to integrate that. So I'm going to let x squared plus 1 be my u. Typically, I'm kind of always looking to the denominator if, it's, if a denominator is present. The derivative gives me 2x dx, um, but we have x dx, so this is a 1 half du equals x dx. All right, switching back over here, let's integrate. Uh, substitute, so I'd have a 1 over u, and x dx is equivalent to a 1 half du. Oh, this isn't so bad at all. So I have x plus some c plus 1 half natural log absolute value of u. Rather than writing u down, I'm just going to look over here and see what u was. And then plus some c. Well, you can understand why we only really need 1c. Let's pull c1 and c2 together and just call it some big gigantic new c. Okay, this absolute value is not really necessary. Can you understand why? If I take x and square it, that'll be a positive value. And 1 is definitely positive, so if I take positive plus positive, it only yields positive, so there's no chance that this expression will turn out to be negative. So I'm going to let my absolute values just kind of evaporate there. Um, one final, this problem really is done. I'm going to go x equals natural log. The power can come back up, and that would be like a square root. So this would be an alternate answer. Well, I think I've run out of my time. I promised you I'd try to keep it low tonight. So that, that gets us just being B in ex example three not done. Example three I'm not worried about. B, go ahead and try it on your own. See if you can do that synthetic division. All right. Um, we will be working with um, WebAssign tomorrow. There's 11 problems. If you want to get started, you sure can because it's open. And then four, six, there's an additional problems worksheet in your packet. Have a great day.